Critical Blast. Where pop culture gets blasted. And welcome, everybody, to the Critical Blast podcast. I am your host, R.J. Carter, Senior Managing Editor here at CriticalBlast.com. And with us tonight, we are talking with Josh Howard, the creator behind T-Bird and Throttle. And Josh, welcome to the show tonight. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So T-Bird and Throttle number four is what I should say. So this is definitely not your first rodeo. It is not. This is the uh, big finale for the first big story arc for T-Bird and Throttle. It seems like just yesterday that I was seeing the introduction of T-Bird and Throttle, but that was what? It was 2018, wasn't it? Actually, 2017 was the first issue. Uh, I, I did The first one I did through Kickstarter, and then I moved over to Indiegogo for issue two. So, so that's when how, most people remember uh, got on board. Okay. So that's probably when I first saw it then, because I yeah. think I saw everything on uh, Indiegogo. When right. I've been seeing comics on Kickstarter for, for years now since, uh, gosh, the first one I think I got was Titan, and that was uh, a cancer charity uh, for, for the author who had... Um, cancer and was fighting it uh, but it really took off with the uh with the, i guess the comic tape movement started putting everything on indiegogo and really started to crowd out the virtual shelves against marvel and dc with uh with the product they were putting out uh, now none of them have been as regular i don't think uh, or few of them has been as regular as t-burn and throttle to get up to like a fourth issue of a continuing series uh, what's been the pressure like for that to come out on a, on a regular basis? You're doing what, quarterly, uh, semi, semi-annually? Um, I'm not sure what it comes down to because, it's like I said, it's been, this is the third year and I'm on the fourth book. So a little bit under a year for each one, I guess. What, um, what, what have you noticed the tracking-wise? Is it like, um, is it going up every issue? Is it staying level, same backers? Um. Let's see. The, the, for actually, for the third one, it did drop um, a little bit, um, but I'm seeing an, definitely a lot of increased activity for the fourth one. Well, a lot of people um, assume that when they go to the next issue, there'll be a tier where they can get any issues they missed in the previous ones. Is that the case with uh, T-Bird and Throttle number four? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I'm not doing individual issues this time. I'm doing it all as a trade paperback. So if you missed out, you can just get everything in one book, you know, or if you've been following all along, you can just get issue four. Okay. So, so if, you did, if you did miss number three, it's not going to be offered on this promotion. You'll have to get the trade paperback. And or, Right. I do have uh, extra, so a few extra copies of three in my web store if people prefer oh, okay. to, you know, get, get the singles that way. I guess the uh, trade paperbacks can be coming pretty hot on the heels of number four uh, because you've got all the print files now. You just have to sort of re rearrange them and add some extra pages and stuff. Yeah, they'll be, it'll be coming out at the same time as number four. Oh, well, I should be more careful in what I read on the IGG pages. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read the headline. Uh, number four. Okay, great. That's, that's what it is. Uh, oh, no worries. I have people who actually look at the campaign and come and ask me, how do I get all the back issues? I'm like, well, Everything is there. Everything's there in that book. That's all you need. So, true. That that's true for <clears throat> readers, but for yes. comic collectors, we have a different mentality. This oh, well, um, this is true. This is true. <laughs> we, we we like having those. This is the issue where that happened as a standalone uh, plot because because we were we were raised on that. That's uh, ingrained into it. Um, yeah. So, so for the uninitiated, like you know me, uh, who, who are T Bird and Throttle? I mean, I know the the main guy is T-Bird, and I'm assuming the sidekick is Throttle, but who are they? Why are their names the way they are? Uh, what's the story with them? Um, it it kind of goes back, if you want, like, the real-life origins. Um, it was 1999. I was working in a comic store, and I was always drawing. I mean, I was always wanted to do comics. That was, you know, that's why I was working there, you know, just to get it, you know, to surround myself with, with comics and everything. And... Um, I would always draw on my breaks, and I I wasn't really in big into drawing superheroes. I was more into like horror type stuff. But I thought if I was to make my own superhero, what would it be? Because you know I was looking at all the different you know motifs, where everything that's been taken, all the names. And I thought, well, I don't know. If, I don't know if there's been a guy that had like an engine in his chest and had maybe a car motif. 
And so that's sort of, it sort of started as a joke, you know, uh, but then I started drawing them and then, uh, I just started to come and I built this whole world around them and it was like, okay, this is maybe not a joke. I actually kind of like this. And so flash forward all these years later, um, it's becoming a thing. Um, but uh, the, the story behind it is he was an astronaut who uh, discovers this alien device on the moon. They call it the engine. Uh, it bonds with him, gives him superpowers. Um, he goes back to earth, becomes a superhero named T-Bird. Eventually gets a sidekick. Um, but then something happens uh, with this power, with the engine. It, it kind of has a mind of its own sometimes. And so uh, there's a horrible accident. Uh, it, uh, people end up dead and uh, he, loses, he, he loses his status as a superhero. He is, his life's ruined. And so the story picks up 10 years later um, after he's uh, trying to pick up the pieces of his life and maybe try to get back out there and restart his career. Um, so that's when the story picks up and you find out more and more about, you know, what the engine is and um, what happened on that day that ruined everything. And uh, so, yeah, that's 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 it in a nutshell. So so his sidekick then is no longer a teen sidekick, I would imagine, because uh, or, or did he pick her up before or after this horrendous accident? Uh, no, it, um, in the story, basically, she was uh, before they became a team, she was an MMA fighter and was really popular. And so the thing is about in this, in this world of my, of, of T-Bird and Throttle, superheroes are done by sponsorships. So uh, businesses or, or either, or uh, organizations can sponsor a hero and basically they pay their wages and they go out there, you know, and do their thing. And so his sponsor is Starlink, who we worked for as an astronaut. And they had this idea of pairing him with someone to help his image, you know, a young, attractive female and so that's what that's why they were put together. <clears throat> that makes sense. I mean, uh, you know, we, we kind of laughed at uh, Booster Gold when he tried to do the whole corporate sponsorship thing because he was like just patched all over like a NASCAR driver. Uh, but mm. th th there's there's an appeal to that where you know, like, okay, so that you've got a hero, you don't have to worry about what his job is because his job is hero. Um, right. <laughs> it pays the bills. <laughs> but you know the more nihilistic, uh, more cynical writers are going to say, and you have to take on the missions that are good for the corporate image. Um, and, and, and nine times out of 10, you end up working for an evil corporation that you end up having to take down, which means you lose your job. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's a lot of implications and, and I guess politics and things like that that could go along with this idea. And that's something that I can, I'm probably gonna explore, you know, as the series progresses even though this is the finale for this like i said this arc there's still a lot more stories of t-bird planned and so you know the ins of out ins and outs of how all that works and ramifications that's something that you know i'll be exploring as, as it goes on now how, how big are the um are the floppies the chapters that you've been putting out are they um larger than the 22 page or smaller than the 22 page that regular issue yeah, uh, they are each uh, between 15 and 60 so, pages. Okay, so those are trade paperback size almost. I mean, not true trade, but they're, they're uh, what would you call prestige-bound right. kind of sized deals. That's a pretty thick uh, chapter. Yeah, each one is about roughly, you know, three, almost three issues worth of material. So so, um, so you get a, a pretty much a 12-issue run uh, in your trade paperback of uh, what you would get normally from a standard comic book series. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so we're looking at something the size of Crisis on Infinite Earths as far as uh, reading length and thickness. That's, uh, that's very cool. Now, you're doing, the, um, you're doing the art as well as the story because you said you were drawing while you were in the stores uh, working in a comic shop. Right, right. Um, yeah, I, I, I write and draw and uh, color and letter. I do I, it all. I always say that. I think that makes it easier for a, a crowd funder uh, because you... Right. Because you're in control of everything. You don't have to pay somebody. Um, you know, a lot of the, if you're writing yeah. it and you're sponsoring it, but you have an artist who's doing the work, well, I, I always tell the audience, guess what? The writer had to pay the artist first. Now he's trying to recoup money, not make money. <laughs> right. Whereas for here, you've got, you know, other than your time that you put into it and materials needed to do the work, you're, you're pretty much pure profit, uh, which, which is excellent. Why did you um, choose to take it as a crowdfunding? And, and what uh, you went Kickstarter first, so that's probably well before uh, all the 
the crowdfunding explosion took off. Uh, what what prompted right. you to go that route? It wasn't really a um, a popular thing at the time, or as popular. Right. Um, well, it was a, a couple of reasons. One, I I just come off a, a basically um, like a 12, 15 year run on Dead at Seventeen, my other series um, at Image. Um, I had tried to get some work at other publishers. You know that I was kind of out from underneath that and. Um, I, I sent some things around and it seemed I wasn't getting any uh, traction, not getting any takers. Um, I, I knew T-Bird was going to be a hard sell because of some, of some of it being the content, some of it because it was a superhero. And I know indie publishers don't do superheroes. And of course, the publishers who do do superheroes do only do their own. So it was, it was always going to be a hard sell. And then also the format I wanted to do it in um i want i always had the idea of doing it in, in like uh triple tr double triple size issues i wanted that that kind of the 80 page giant feel from back in the day yeah um that was because i know mean, the story is so big i didn't like the idea of having to piece this out over a year year two years um so with all that in mind i thought the only way i could conceivably do this is break it up into four parts and crowdfund it so uh, that's what i did did, did you approach Image at all with it when you were uh, coming off Dead at 17? I did not because, um, without getting too much into the, the weeds with how Image runs things, um, I was losing more and more money each year at Image um, to the point where I was so in the hole there was no getting out of it. So like to take another series there and just have to be in and like, just any profit I made would have just been, you know, going to filling that hole it would just seem like depressing. <laughs> okay. So and that's, I, that's because of the money that image takes from it because image isn't a publishing house. They're like a distribution house uh, before the distribution house. Yeah. You know, and they, well, make yeah. their, they make, they make their money and then, you know, you're on your own and uh, there's so many like fees and hidden feet and things that you're constantly getting dinged for. Like, uh, you know, I'm constantly losing money over there. So I just didn't want to go through that, you know, hassle again. So, but that's uh, now that was uh, still three, four years ago. So I'm gonna guess it's probably still the way it is now. And um, that's a good advice to uh, to know in advance before you do go take something, I guess, to a place like Image that there's gonna be that kind of a fee behind it. Uh, you know, you expect they're gonna make money, uh, mm -hmm. like like any other publisher. We're, we're a publisher. People bring stories to us. We pay them for the story, but we're gonna make way more money because we're gonna be publishing the book. Um, we well, don't do that yet. That's the that's the dream. It works good on paper, but we're we're struggling to get there yet. Uh, Dark yeah. Admiral March Hare, thank you for popping in here. Glad to see you. Um, for people who do come into the stream and are watching the replay, we're talking with Josh Howard from T Bird and Throttle, and there is a link, the very first thing you'll see in the description right below, that will take you to that Indiegogo page. Uh, when we set this up and scheduled it, Todd had. Uh, Todd was last night. Go back and watch that one. Uh, <laughs> Josh had not yet uh, closed the uh, goal. Uh, since that time, he has completed the goal. He has reached it. This is going to be a done deal. So we're just trying to stretch it out further and maybe hit some of those uh, stretch goals and uh, new tiers. So since, we're, since that's where we are, uh, why don't you tell us about some of the stretch goals that people can uh, try to shoot for now? Well, the only one I've uh, announced is the $18,000 stretch goal, which would um, include the um, sketchbook that I released in 2017 with the, with the Kickstarter campaign, uh, which is about 30 pages of sketches that chronicled T-Bird's evolution from 1999 all the way up to present. So if we hit that goal, then that will be part of the trade paperback, the collected edition. Okay. Um <clears throat> I want T-Bird and Throttle action figures. What's you, that? You and, you and me both. Oh my God. That is, believe me, it's something I, uh, I know someone about. who can help you with that too. Oh, do you? Yes. And, and you do too, uh, because he's probably on your Twitter timeline. Uh, George Peter Gatsis, uh, the guy who does, um, uh, Joe versus, well, yeah, the, the Joe King versus series. Uh, he, he does 3d prints and molds and he's, He's shown me some of the stuff in another stream of, the, of what he's putting together. Uh, and yeah, he can, 
he can do to order these three excellent 3D figures. So okay, well that's good to know. Um, all right, I uh, actually put that in the back I even have a, okay, and I have a, actually have a friend who works in the designer toy business and has sort of been giving me advice and showing me kind of you know showing me the ropes on what it takes to get things done and um, so like I sort of have a, a a plan in mind for how I could make it happen. Um, it just takes a lot of money up front, of course. Um, but it is something that I, I am looking at. Um, what kind of a world is it that T-Bird and Throttle occupy? Because you, you said it's corporate sponsored superheroes. Um, I'm going to guess that they're all corporate sponsored. Or do you have your, uh, just, just, just kind of flesh out the, the world building here a little bit. Um, well, it's okay. It's a, it's obviously a world that's not ours. It's a pair. It's, you know, kind of, uh, it's evolved differently. I mean, it's basically it's Earth, but you know, with a different origin, different uh, theology, history. So there, there's similarities, but there's differences. So um, as far as you know, how the superheroes work. Um, yeah, most of them, you know, are sponsored, but you can go indie. Um, a lot of it is sort of a comment on the comic book industry. Um, there are two main. Um, sponsors of heroes called Justice Corp and Avenge Inc. Um, <laughs> so, but you know, and if you don't, like, that's where everyone wants to be. You know, that's you want a, a deal with one of those outfits. But, but you can go indie. The thing is, you know, if you go indie, obviously, uh, you're not getting paid. You still have to work a regular job, and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, um, some of this, you'll see more of this play out in number four, uh, and the ramifications of some of this stuff. Um, so I don't want to say too much yet, um, because that is a plot point in, uh, in, the, in the number four. All right. Uh, villains. <clears throat> yeah. Are they sponsored? Uh, no, but um, there, is a, there is a Department of Superhero Affairs where they officially can designate you a hero or a villain. And um, as you saw in book three, T-Bird's status was officially changed to villain. And so now everyone's out you know, hunting him. Um, so, so the great disaster was more than just an accident where it's like, this guy can't control his powers, get out of the game. It was, oh, you are not the good guy in the perception of the public. Uh, well, he wasn't designated a villain until this last, uh, this current storyline. Before, uh, the first, when he had the accident, um, his sponsor, Starling, was able to sort of kind of save his butt and uh, make some deals so he didn't do any jail time, you know, uh, kind of minimize the ramifications. He basically just lost his job and his public standing, but he wasn't a villain at that time, um, officially, until until right now. I'm, I'm sure it's a plot point that you don't really want to get into too much, but that seems like the most powerful position to have in that world is deciding to deciding who is a hero and who is a villain, and it's stick. Well, yeah, it's sort of the theme of the series in a lot of ways. It's like, you know, the definitions of hero and villain and, and how those definitions can change with time, you know, and some of the, maybe the values that superhero had, you know, 50 years ago, those same values would be considered, you know, wrong today or, or vice versa. So, you know, it's, it's what does all that mean and what does it mean, you know, for today? So that's sort of a lot of what the series is about. Yeah, because it would seem like, um, again, <clears throat> coming in totally from the outside on this, um, that if you have an organization that says, you know, we designate you as hero, it would be because mm -hmm. you meet this list of qualifications. And now you've got to think, well, how does, how do, how do heroes like Spider-Man and the Punisher, just to pick two, compare? Because some people will say they're both heroes. Our Wolverine is, you know, hero. Well, one of them mm -hmm. is obviously, uh, you know, very consciously guided by a set of ethics. And the other one is, I will take you down and you will not get back up if that is what it takes to get this job done. Right. <laughs> so, so, so they have yeah. different levels or, you know, this one's licensed to kill, but this one is going to be, you know, like a, a, a golden boy. Well, okay. yeah, you know, I don't know. Those are good questions and things that, you know, I haven't necessarily come into play yet, but, um, but I think those are good questions because it does, I mean, it's the, like you said, the idea of having this organization presents all kinds of problems, you know, but, you know, um, it's going to be fun to explore for sure. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. 
it, it, it kind of reminds me of, um, of, of, of the conundrums that were put up in Marvel's Civil War, the original one, not the last 17 that they've done since then, um, mm -hmm. where, you know, they said, hey, we're going to govern superhero activity. Um, and, you know, we're basically, you're, you're going to have to license with us and register with us. And we're going to know your identity. Uh, and it's, you know, it's an idea that's not all that new because it, it really goes back to, uh, I don't know what issue or year it was, but I'm just going to go with the whole America versus the Justice Society miniseries that Roy Thomas did for DC, um, which, you know, during the McCarthy era, they're saying that the heroes had to register and show their faces. So it goes mm -hmm. back quite a way. Uh, and, and speaking of showing your faces, I'm going to assume that secret identities aren't a thing in this kind of a setup. Oh, there's nothing to say they couldn't be, but um, uh, for the characters that are in play right now, no, there's really no secret identities. Um, I, I always like the secret identity. I don't know why that's been thrown away so much lately, but uh, like, no, yeah, I, I dig it too. Yeah, I think it, but you know, um, it, it, I guess it does seem something to be much more difficult in today's uh, today's world. I would think. right. I mean, you, you, uh, we grew up with this whole, uh, we're pulling off all these different shenanigans and, and parlor tricks to trick people into thinking that we're not who you think we are. Uh, you know, like, like Clark Kent dressing up as Batman so that Bruce Wayne can shake his hand <laughs> at some ceremony. Uh, you know, Martian Manhunter mm -hmm. has stood in on a number of occasions. And, and now it's like, you know, Batman's going to fight Bane. He's like, you know, okay, no masks. And he just pulls it off or we find out Joker knows who everybody in the Bat family is and has known forever and a day. And it's like, and he, he's sleeping with Catwoman. She knows who he is. I'm like, what's the point anymore? <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you even trying Bruce? <clears throat> right. <laughs> but, but here you like, like you said, you got the corporate sponsorship. So uh, there's no need to hide. You don't have to be a mild mannered reporter. You're just going to basically sit around in your apartment, work out in the corporate gym, uh, wait for the page to say, Hey, you need to go here and do that. Uh, is is that how they it, it works? By the way, are they sent on missions, or do they define missions on their own? Do they just go out on patrol and you know beat the streets? Um, I guess I mean some of this stuff is not things that I've you know given you know put on paper per se. Um, it's one of those things where I'll deal with it as the situation presents itself. Um, but um, it is definitely probably. For uh, the two, Justice Inc. and Avenge Corp. is definitely more of a, here's your mission. Um, it's definitely more, you know, tightly controlled. Um, so things get handed uh, out. I think, yeah. But for T-Bird, um, you know, being sponsored by Starlink, the way I picture that it, the way it ran was, it wasn't that way. He was pretty much the only hero they sponsored. And so he had a lot more latitude. Um, I would imagine uh, if you've got two competing corporations, they would be competing to show up first on the scene like you know like 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 two ambulance companies <clears throat> operating in the same town trying to get to the accident first so that they can rake in the uh reward for it um right so to speak. uh is is that how is does that happen in your universe uh, uh, uh theoretically yes uh, it has not happened yet but that's you know like i said uh, a lot of these things are going to be playing out um over time so uh definitely be uh something that's going to be explored for sure all right so so you've got more t-bird and throttle stories in you after this mm -hmm. one you said you got lots of them go out forward um i know you haven't delivered on this one yet we know you're going to because mm -hmm. you delivered the last three and everybody's happy yes. um when will they see you know t-bird and throttle number five or is it gonna be like number one again with a subtitle have you put much thought into where you're at on that and how far along are you into it um i do know what the next one's going to be um well it's i'm still debating on whether it'll call it five or i haven't decided yet but it will not be like a four-parter again it'll, they'll be the next few are going to be more standalone although they will continue a larger story arc they won't be like broken up into you know chapters so you'll get maybe a, a 40 58 page or 60 page uh story that'll stand alone for the next few um 
yeah, as to far as, you know, how soon that'll happen, um, it may happen within a couple of months before, or I may take a break and do something, a new book in between just to give myself some, uh, you know, flex my creative muscles on something else. Um, do you have any that's a possibility. That? I do. Um, Can you tell us? <laughs> I, I can't because I mean you know, like for like reasons. What kind of um, would be, but you don't have to say it's hey, it's called this, and it's going to start that guy. But you know, it's like say hey, I'm going to do something horror. Um, or I'm going to do something comedy. There's a reason. It, it, most likely horror. Okay. Um, most likely horror, and that's all I can really say. Yeah. Gotcha. What kind of um, a tone? does the T-Burn and Throttle world have? Is it, is it a very serious and cynical tone? Is it more lighthearted and optimistic? Um, is it just played straight, superhero? I mean, if you, if you were to compare it to- The tone, you said? Yeah, if you were to compare it to another published series, you know, today or 30 years ago, uh, would it be more like the, um, like the smart-ass Spider-Man or the dark and grit gritty Batmans of the Frank Miller era? Where, where would this kind of fall? If uh, you wanted to say, hey, you want to read it if you like this. Um, it's hard to say exactly because it does have some very dark, very dark, serious moments uh, and ideas in it. But it also has a lot of levity uh, and some humor. Um, so I I'm hard pressed to think of one thing off the top of my head. Um, I mean, one of the things, of course, you know, things I was influenced most by, you know, when I was younger was, you know, Dark Knight Returns, um, of course, the Batman animated series. Uh, um, I like the Fantastic Four, at least the idea of the Fantastic Four. I didn't actually read like a, a lot of runs. I read a few issues here and there. Um, so uh, it's it's pr it's probably a, a good mix. I've heard someone describe it as the Incredibles meets Dark Knight Returns. Um, what, not as not as grim as that, or as light as that, but a happy medium. Where what were you reading that um, might have been inspirations for this when you were first putting it together? Where did where did you draw inspiration from? Um, if anybody. It, you know. It's like I said. It's I mean, um, it's it's uh, Dark Knight Returns. It's Transformers in a weird way. It's um, it's um, I'm thinking Iron Man. Science fiction got, got a little bit. Of, well, it's, I never read Iron Man, which is you know I wasn't even aware that, of that thing that he had until the Iron Man movie, to be honest. <laughs> I, was so, I, I was so alien to Iron Man of what you know, that story was about. Um, so that's interesting that I didn't, yeah, but that is, you know, I can definitely see that. Um, I don't know, I just, um, it was more, more like what I wanted to see that I wasn't seeing, I guess, is yeah. what influenced a lot of what the book is. I, I, I've uh, had a lot of writers say that, you know, they. They had to write the story they wanted to read because they couldn't find what they wanted to read anywhere. And yeah, and I don't know what yeah, that that's... says about the industry, but um, I, I guess it's more well. I mean, I more think homogeneity. The, the ser... that it's all the same. I, I think this. I think the, the. I think the series has is in a lot of ways me commenting on the industry. Um, so. Um, can you give us any examples of a, a direct jab or, or direct uh, allegory, rather, uh, to the industry that, ha that happens in one of the past three issues so you don't spoil anything coming up? Uh, obviously, we've got the Justice League and Avengers um, going on here, but you're talking about allegories to the actual industry, not to the things that they've created. Well, uh, one thing that I... It's it's I don't know how obvious it is. It, it may be more kind of subtle, but it's something that uh, the idea that um, how superhero comics have gotten more and more realistic uh, over time. Um, I prefer old days where things were more fantastic and you didn't see every rivet or seam on a costume. Yeah, um, you don't have to explain the science behind everything. Um, 
so when you look, there's a rack of comic books in, uh, in issue one, and it's kind of the inverse of modern comics. In, the, in this world, uh, comics are about a lot of, there's, there's a lot of comics about very realistic things like Senate or the president or government, but they're told in a fantastic way. Um, whereas our comics today in the real world are fantastic ideas told in a realistic way. Okay. So it's sort of a weird inverse um, of that. That would be interesting. It's sort of like in Watchmen where there were superheroes, so why would anybody read superhero comics? They're, they want something different from that. There was the pirate comic kind of thing going on. Uh, mm -hmm. But taking the mundane stuff and telling it in a fantastic fashion, uh, I think that would be an interesting comic to actually have here, by the way. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. I, I would read some of that stuff. Uh, probably learn something, too. Uh, I had a thought, and now I can't uh, remember where it was going. So it'll come to me after we close out the stream. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Don't get old, Josh. It sucks. <laughs> Um, is, is there anything about uh, T-Bird and Throttle that, you know, you've been wanting to communicate to somebody and nobody's asked the question to open the door for it? Has there anything that I've been wanting someone to ask? Is that what you, what you said? Yeah, you know, something you've been dying to tell sorry, people, sorry but to just nobody says, asks the right question, so it never comes up. Oh, uh, that is a, that's a good question. No, that's a cheap um... question. <laughs> I keep that in my back pocket all the time. It's like, what am I not asking you? Um, maybe when the series is done, um, that's something I could answer more clearly. Um, I mean, I feel like uh, uh, I've uh, there have. I mean, I've touched on a lot of uh, some. You know, I guess you could say hot button issues in a sense that have only become more relevant as I've worked on the series and it's, you know, as the world progresses, like the story was always, this, the things that happened were always going to happen, you know, even way like years ago, but it's weird how like, as I'm making it uh, now, it's sometimes it's almost like maybe two on the nose, um, especially after issue three and is what's happened since that count. Um, so you're seeing things in the so, I mean, world that the real world is caught up to? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I've been yeah, I don't know. I, I wonder if, if, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I wonder if, if I was writing it now, would I take things? Would I shy away from things or do things differently? So, uh, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to make it before things got, you know, the way they are. Um, but yeah, so I have. There are things in there that are definitely relevant to what's going on, and I hate. Yeah, I hate that word just because it seems like oh, we're making the, when, person, when people use that word like we're making it now to be relevant. It always yeah. like makes me roll my eyes, <laughs> you know. I, like I completely um, get you. It, it all usually means yeah. So uh, I'm aware of how that sounds, um, um, but it, it it was definitely meant to comment on, like I said, largely superhero comics and uh, the thing like the things that I've. Seen that it, I'm not too crazy about. And so I hope it, you know, at some point, maybe it'll start a, at least a conversation or people will be asking me more specific questions about that. Well, I don't know, we'll see. That, after, would make a, uh, done. that would make a great essay as a backup in the uh, trade paperback, by the way, just, you know, to, to actually delineate specifically what things you saw in the industry that you wanted to address in this series. Um, I don't know if that's something that you had considered putting in there or not, but I'll just throw it out there. But but yeah, real world topics, uh, shooting for relevance. I, I, I go for the opposite. Uh, I try to take the real world stuff and make it irrelevant. Uh, uh, <laughs> you cut out. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. You're, you're cutting out too on my end, so. Oh, sorry about that. I hope it's not, um, hope it's not my oh, end. Oh, no, it's all me. I, it's all me. <laughs> but. I, I, I'm I'm privileged and blessed to uh, be able to work on the Destroyer series with Remo Williams. Um, there was a movie in the '80s called Remo Williams: The Adventure Begins. If anybody's seen that, it's that character, and and everything that goes on in here is a lot of satire. 
uh, politically and socially and, and stuff that you see in the news. And every time I start working on a manuscript, I tell my publisher, I'm like, you know, I got to throw it away because this thing I was making fun of is something that's actually happening now. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's no longer satire. Um, right. <laughs> what, what's that thing, Poe's Law, where it's like, you know, it, it's so ridiculous that you can't tell that it's not true. Uh, and so, so the world is making it yeah, hard yeah. for me to make fun of it because it's making fun of itself. Um, so, so the th you, you've hit your goal. Uh, how many more days do you have left on the campaign to um, stretch it out as, to its maximum? Uh, um, I think uh, five or six days. I think it, that. Oh, that's close. Are, are you going to extend it, or is it? Um, yeah, you've got five or six days. Uh, is, is that the absolute yeah. end, or are you going to extend it another 30? Um, I, I probably won't do an extension, but I, I, I'll probably leave it uh, uh, up in, in demand. Uh, okay. For, for a bit, yeah. All right, so, so that, that one and only stretch goal probably is the best um, shot we've got for making something else happen. Uh, so everybody, hit that link, get out there and... Uh, Pick one of those tiers for T-Bird and Throttle number four. Uh, and if you didn't get the first three, then obviously go for that trade paperback. It'd be the uh, best option for you there. Uh, and while you're down in the description area, you know, if you, want, if you like what you're seeing here and you want to support the channel, uh, surf on over to criticalblast.com. Check out the articles and interviews there. It doesn't cost you a thing to do that. And we can make a little bit of ad penny, pennies there. Uh, but if you do, do want uh, merchandise, we are a publishing house, and I am pushing this book right now. This is our last hardcover novel. This is a young adult superhero book, um, not a graphic novel. It is a novel novel from Stephen J. Mitchell called Bulletproof. Uh, and, I'm, and, and Stephen is going to be on Pop XP tonight at uh, 8.30 Central Time, 9.30 Eastern. So we're going to pop on over there and wish him the best. Uh, he's been uh, job displaced by COVID right now. So he's a single dad with a teenage daughter and no income stream. So we're, uh, we, we've bumped up his royalty rate to basically 100% on this thing right now. And we're just trying to sell as many of the books as possible to, you know, keep the lights on for Stephen. Uh, Josh, it's been a pleasure having you on here. I wish I had more relevant questions on here about uh, T-Bird and Throttle or, you know, the, the industry in general. But Sometimes, you know, it's safer not to comment on things that are going on. And right now, the things that are going on are pretty hot button issues. Uh, so I don't know if you want to get into anything like that or not. <laughs> agreed, agreed. <laughs> uh, uh, understood. And we will uh, go ahead and drop it there. Uh, appreciate you coming on here. Best of luck with uh, getting the most out of T-Bird and Throttle that you can here. And we will look forward to that trade paperback and the installment after that. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, for, thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. Hi. Thanks for stopping by for another Critical Blast video. The internet is a big place, and we know there are lots of other places you could be other than here, and we appreciate you being here immensely. If you enjoyed this kind of content, we hope you'll return for more. If you click the subscribe button, you'll get a little notification of when we produce new video content. If you would like to help the channel out, there are many ways to do so. Just visiting our main hub, criticalblast.com, will do wonders. But if you're more of a show me the merchandise type of person, there are links in the description of this video to our t-shirt shop, as well as links to Amazon for the books we publish under the Critical Blast publishing imprint, including the urban fantasy anthology Gods and Services and the YA superhero novel Bulletproof by Stephen J. Mitchell. Thanks again for visiting this video. We hope you had a blast.